World Series of Poker bracelets are the dream of poker players and amateurs alike. But if you're a pro, a real pro, someone who has been around the block, someone who has seen it all, this is what you want to win. The Chip Reese Memorial Trophy, because it means you are a master of the trade, that among the best of the best, you are the best. The $50,000 Poker Players Championship is next. Likes to limp in on the button. Brewer comes along with a king high rundown, and then Lang wakes up with the beautiful aces and hearts. A much better PLO eight hand than PLO, but nevertheless, you'll take it. He has potted it to 200,000 out of the big. Decent chance that Lang can all end up all in in this hand. I mean, both players have a hand that can easily call here. We'll we'll have 600k in the pot going to the flop, and Lang is on the short side here. The deepest of stacks, Alezra comes in with 94 bigs. Volpe 87, Brewer 84, Kate 77, and then as you mentioned, the shorty, Lang, could be all in at any given moment with just 32 bigs. Both players come along for the ride and the flop is six deuce three. So the aces become bottom two pair on the two spade board and that relevant ace of spades is nestled in his hand as well. I think Lang might just bet here and get it through though it doesn't really look like Alezra or Brewer have the hand to get all in here instead Lang checks back now a seven rolls off on the turn giving Brewer the gut shot straight draw nine still an over pair with the sixth angler having connected yeah I'm very curious to see how this one proceeds I mean all three players now have a little bit of a uh, might have a little bit of belief that they can win this pot yeah, Brewer gave it some thought, but settles on a check. Lang still checking as well as he does have the shortest of stacks and isn't in love with the texture. Now that eight of spades on the end comes right into the gut for Brewer as he makes a 10 high straight. Spades are there. One spade in his hand. I wonder whether he'll want to go for value here. And it looks like yes. And the presence of that spade obviously serves as a blocker to somebody holding a flush. Yeah, and also just the fact that nobody showed any interest on the flop or the turn might make a, a flush draw a little less likely to be out. And he just goes for a really small block bet here. And wow. Lang goes for it with the ace of spades. Will he get credibility here, however, after having expressed disinterest in middle position on both the flop and the turn? Yeah, this is a tough situation for Brewer here. Uh, one thing that plays to, in Brewer's favor here is that this is the sort of situation that he's extremely comfortable dealing with, right? I mean, he's a, a high stakes, big bet game player. Uh, unlike some of the maybe more the mixed game players in this tape, in this field. Wow, he calls his exact hand. That's got to be a little terrifying if you're Ryan Lang when he calls your exact hand right away. No kidding. Look at Lang just trying to hold it together, but discombobulating to say the least. And Brewer can certainly afford to make this call. Dinner every day, go home and lay down. And Lang can ill afford to get called as he'll be left yeah. with just 275K vapors. Lang played this hand, I think, in a fairly unorthodox manner. I mean, a lot of players might have just decided to just bet big on the flop and go with the hand. He decided to just kind of check it down and now using that eight of spades on the river to kind of turn his hand into a bluff. Not what maybe I would have expected, but obviously he's putting Brewer into a tough spot now. <laughs> really, the question for Brewer, Chris, becomes, did my man check a flush draw on two streets? Right, exactly. I mean, it's a kind of a he either has it or he doesn't situation, right? I don't know. It's like the wall stand, I bet, but I just don't really want to fold. Interesting. I think Brewer will end up folding after that comment. He said it's the no. worst hand that he bets. But he doesn't really want to fold. <laughs> right, but... At the end of the day, I think he tries to play fairly, I don't know, like all I don't know game theory optimal, or whatever he believes that to be. I mean, you probably just put in naked aces, actually, on the flop. Like, what do you really care? Interesting, it's, he's talking himself out of it now. That's 650 in. You have an SP off two. Or whatever, if one of us has full five, you probably just take it in. You probably just, I guess it actually does make sense for you to have it more. Nah. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Wow. Oh, it works. 
Very well done. You can show it. Three red cards? Just the ace of spades. And Lang shows the aces with the ace of spades, and that's going to torture Brewer. For sure. Yeah, have a flush. He kind of talked himself out of that one. Yeah, I had 10 9 with a spade. I want to see something like 60? 71. 71. That's Pretty good guess. So incredible. Split tens here for Brewer, and after Alezra brings it in three suited with the low card, so Brewer chooses to flat Brewer with some larger cards in the limp. door behind him. Yeah, he sees the queen behind him, who then does over limp, and an ace yep. behind him from Volpe. But again, a bit of a conservative route. You know, m many players would probably just come in c with a completion with the 10 10 7 here. And I wonder what Cates' read is on Brewer's limp as right, he chose yeah. to just. Limp behind. Yeah, jungle played relatively conservatively with ace, king, queen. And, queen. and a great street for Brewer here, as nobody really seems to catch much. And he catches a sneaky little jack of diamonds, which has some extra value. Not only does he have the best hand, but he has a lot of backdoor draws developing. Jungle decides to tear one off, considering he has a pretty strong three over cards to any pair that Brewer might have. And some backdoor draws himself. And Ellie with the bring-in had three spades and might decide to tear one off here as well. Which he does. So a bit of a medium-sized stud pot developing here. 490 in there. Fifth Street being delivered. Cates picks up the Broadway draw. Yeah, good street for Jungle. Bricks for the opposition. And Brewer decides to make a conservative check here. Again, I think showing a little inexperience in the game. Now he sees a 10 fall dead, and Jungle wow. makes a Broadway. A two outer for Daniel Cates, and that 10 leaves the and field drawing dead. Ellie, sensing weakness, just decides to go for it here with his. Oh, well, he makes kings, right? So, yeah, he just thinks he has the best hand here a lot. And little does he know that he is drawing dead yeah. against Cates, who makes it 400,000. It's pretty brutal to have kings here and be up against Broadway when you see a 10 jack queen board. Oh, and it's and kings, he makes kings up, up for Lesra, so the payoff is eminent. Quickly call. Good. Yeah. Another great situation for jungle. And you really can't fault Ellie, I don't think, for, for the way that hand was played. Not I mean, right. he was probably just going to get away from it and lose nothing on 5th Street, but it just ended up checking around, and he caught that disastrous king of diamonds. I caught a glimpse of jungle's... Shoes there. That's I think you alluded line. to them earlier. They're like bright blue. Yeah, oh, they're awesome. That's what I kind of thought it was. Yeah. Where does one go to procure such footwear? The same place you get that call. awesome vest, obviously. All right, sorry, I'll push Do you ball. think they're go-go boots and he just cut the call. tops off? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, clearly I mean, he the was man doing knows his, how to work yeah, shears. He's doing yeah. his shears work this morning. He probably <laughs> easily could have. Brewers limp out of the cutoff, draws Lang on the button. Volpe will take a free peek at a flop. Three players. And all three players have cards that overlap each other and could get some trouble, although this flop, I believe, is kind of a nothing burger for most of the players. Well, here. Lang does have the 10 high heart draw and two pairs yeah, very in his likely, hand, albeit. If it checks to him and he decides to bet, very likely to just take it. But it checks around instead. Round the knuckles, and on the turn, in comes the flush for Lang. Will we see someone take a stab at this pod? Check. Check. Check's around. Still no betting, and unlike in Hold'em, the fourth Ooh, heart really isn't. Volpe makes a straight on the end here when he had problem. nothing. Yeah. A bit of a tricky spot for him, too. With four hearts on the board, it's less likely that one of his opponent holds a flush. When I say it isn't a problem, it isn't a problem for Lang, but for Volpe, yeah, as you alluded to, it is a problem go because for a it small makes value it here. that much less likely he's up against a flush. And with the round of checks on the turn, including Lang in position, Volpe's going to have a tough time buying into. Yeah, so we've seen Lang play kind of conservatively, conservatively on some rivers, but I feel like he has a hand that could raise here. And here so it comes. And puts Volpe in the blender because I suppose there's some chance that, that 
he could just feel that Lang has a straight. Now remember that earlier in this session, in this very game of Pot Limit Omaha, when Ryan Lang was short, mm -hmm. he pulled off a very sneaky check raise on the end with a dry ace of spades and aces up against that man there, Chris Brewer. Yes, and Volpe showed it at after this point, folded. Uh, yeah. If he didn't pay attention in that moment, his camp might very well have yeah. shown that hand to him, and it's got to be playing in his mind right now. And I heard Paul mutter just there that he thinks that they could have the same hand, which is kind of understandable. Yeah, Volpe has a hard blocker in his hand too. And Lang has played this hand well. He's found a way to get a, lot, a decent amount of value when his opponents had nothing really going in. Yeah, and Volpe comes up on the wrong side of it here. As Lang has the goods. Chris picks up another hand here on the button. This one might be good enough to raise small, but it looks like he might just shove it anyway. 1.1 million. He puts 800. Most of it out there. Yep. Call. Call. Oh, Lang, oh, Lang no. with the slow play. Uh -oh. yeah. This is really filthy. Trying to invite and Kate's this, into trouble. Right. This is terrifying for Brewer, but what are you going to do with two sevens? Other than hope to hit a seven on the flop. Does he just put it in dark? It's in the dark. I guess he's just putting the rest in dark now, the jungle full of the big blind. And I'm not sure I love that. I'm not going to be critical needlessly, Jesus. but. Wow. I mean, that's the such a bad call. Wow, I wonder if Chris is thinking of folding. He actually might possibly save his stack here. I mean, the little stack that remains. Yeah, he's not going to do it, but. Call. Yeah deflating feeling there. The Absolutely. flop was already yeah, bad seven, enough, and then the two jacks. Yeah, Chris has had a rough day. And he's wearing it all over his face. Absolutely. And Ryan, and Ryan Lang, by contrast, has had an amazing day, and uh, hoping for it to continue here. Just has to avoid a seven. We'll find out if this is potentially destiny for Ryan Lang, who really has been a buzzsaw through the field yeah. since the onset of this final table and is poised to claim the first pelt here at this final table. Brewer needs a seven and a seven only to double up and take this 2.35 million and maintain hope. Here comes the river. It's oh. a six and unfortunately that spells the end for one Chris Brewer, but hold your head up high, young man. An inexperienced player in many of the variants who was literally asking for the rules to some of the games at the onset of this Poker Players Championship, ponied up his 50,000 and is gonna take home 211 and change for yeah, a fifth I mean, place finish. Obviously, he's got a, you know, if, if you ask him at the start of the tournament, he'd be thrilled with that, but if you ask him at the start of today, he's gonna be very disappointed. Yes. Here comes Ellie again with another premium. Oh my goodness, the seven draw with Ooh, an info six. We're gonna see six. some action here. And listen, Lang will probably Frosty, raise. the yep, snowman, might come to town here. No, I think that it's just gonna go four bet call. Oh, Ellie's playing this one passively, actually. I'm actually kind of surprised to see this. It's gonna go two one. Draws two. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe Ling would look to nah. turn it into a bluff. You know what the problem is? I thought we were playing no limit single draw. Ah, so my apologies. I, wow, I forgot we're in the triple draw variant. Look at these premium draws, though. Really Check. beautiful. Um, Lang had a pair of fives, which Ellie really needs. Raise. Wow, Two this bets. is this is non-standard from Lang to raise here for value with a four-card wheel. Yeah, given that he's out of position. I, I understand his thinking. He's thinking Ellie has a much weaker hand than he does because of his lack of a four-bet preflop. Well, remember, so, Lang has seen two sevens, two fives, and now two deuces. True, yeah. yeah. And Ellie didn't. And Ellie didn't. Bets. Ellie might have made his hand here. We haven't seen the hand yet. Yeah. But this is representing a pad. Is it an eight? Yeah, I or mean, it's it going to be seven? an eight or a seven. I mean, it's not going to be much else. Uh, I'd like to see the hand here, but... It has not registered, so this will be an interesting think, spot. You know, the 876 is looming live, and Lang catches a tricky card here. When you make the 9 here, you have to be a little wary about breaking the winner and what's turning into a large pot. Oh, my wow, goodness. Wow, he's, he's turning his hand into like a kind of a semi-bluff where he's hoping to get Ellie to break a better 9. I can't say I'm a fan of this play, though, with the 7542 draw. I, I, I think he's giving up on the quality of the draw. This is the river, though. There is no break. Either Ellie... No, no, there's another draw. There's one more draw to go. Uh, Ellie has a tough decision here with eight, seven, six, three, two. He cannot like this. 
Right, it's super this rough. Is, I stand corrected. You is, are right. This is the hand that, that is going to have a really difficult decision here. Lang's going to stand pat, I think. But this is definitely non-standard from Lang. He's turning his 7542 into a bit of a bluff by... by well, the problem is if he, doesn't, if he doesn't check raise and he check calls and then pats, he really does start to cap his range. His hand looks exactly like what it is, and Something, that's exploitable. Something's off here. The dealer has dropped the deck. Now he's picking it back up. Yes. I think there was some confusion here amongst the players as well as amongst us. Ellie is deciding whether to break his eight. Okay. Basically what happens is he called the check raise, and now Lang stood pat with the 97542. And Ellie is really, really miserable here with 8763 deuce. He has a premium draw. Well, I already patted. I think. He patted. Yeah, no, I think thinking. he patted, right? No, he's thinking. Oh, he did oh he's still thinking. Right. All right. Yeah, I mean, the longer this goes, the more inclined Ellie is, the is to break. Draw. There's one more draw. What one do more you think? draw. Okay. The yeah, Ellie's correct. Here. I have three burn cards here. I Ellie, must have Ellie's what correct. There's there? another draw. Okay. Probably mixed it in from the draws. So the, the reason I say that is the longer this goes, Ellie is more inclined to break because his hand is more and more face up as exactly what it looks like, an 8-7 of some flavor. If he breaks this, Lang's going to get away with murder here. This is an absolute, like, steal. Yeah, he's going to break it. Draws one. He's getting away with absolute craziness here. Now, of course, Ellie can still just make no. the hand. Yeah, Ellie's immediately realizes he broke the winner. And Ellie's paired. Eight, yep, this is going to work. Lang, Lang got away with it. Good, Notice that Lang would have made a seven if he had played the hand standardly. Yeah. So he would have won a big pot either way. He was never going to lose this hand. The deck wasn't going to let him lose. He would have caught the six and made number yeah. four. Instead, the six is given to Elezra, who pairs, and with Lang having checked. And Ellie's going to be really upset when yeah. he sees this result. I think he knows already that he broke bad. All the relevant Oh, Ellie's very upset. That was a huge pot. Three million chips in that pot. So I think, I mean, Lang, Lang was intentional in what he did there. He was trying to get Ellie to break a better nine or an eight. But my analysis of why I don't like the play is because his draw was just so premium. I mean, when you have the 7542, you don't want to abandon that draw. You want to try to make the wheel. Not throwing anything else. Do it. Queen of Diamonds. Call. Kate's Complete. showing the nine. Uh, Lips Volpe and, of course, Volpe. Whoa. El Ezra has a big hand here, too. Yeah. It's so this will get raised, and then uh, Jungle will get out of the way. All right. And there's a dead ace and four now with from Jungle's hand, and Volpe and Elezra have two very strong holdings here. Have fun. It's kind of a card catching contest at this point. Sure. It's about as fair of a fight as you could see. Two of them. Looks like Paul won the first skirmish. That 200 and a call. Indeed, he did. Trying to number two, Elezra catches. But wait, we have a new leader in the clubhouse. Yeah. And Volpe drawing notice, better than the 7 six. Notice that both players have reason to believe that their opponent has paired one of their cards, but neither has. And it's well, just going to go all in, and it's going to be a flip. Volpe, Volpe raises slightly on the in come. the lead. Elezra ends up getting it all in, and now two cards remain. The made 10-7 and the 7-6 redraw against the 6-draw. Paul has a 6-draw. I got an ace, 5 Ellie has a 10, and he got an 6-4. Need so this is a good example of a situation you were mentioning earlier. Lezer has the best current hand, but he's just not ahead. Final card. You got the best in. I need to help now. Yeah, Volpe's now well ahead. I'll whip it over. Are you right? You want me to whip it over? And Lezer's going to have a squat, a squeeze here probably, unless Volpe just hits him dead here. Volpe improves to a nine. Nine. And we oh. see that Lezer is going to have a 50-50 that's dead. No spot. Four or five. It's a 50-50 for Ellie, Shit, but it's not the there. Spade. 50-50. With Volpe having 50 -50. made a nine low, yep. Lezra squeezes and he will be displeased with the result. No! That's it. Good game, Ellie. For the legend. Great, 
Ellie Elezra, who was having himself one heck of a World Series. Fought yeah. and fought hard. Didn't go down without swinging. Yeah, he was surviving for a really long time and finally got into a situation he couldn't get away with. And Jungle picks up a good hand. Let's see what happens. But he's going with a flat. It's Makes sense. Spot. Yeah, it's a big one. And Queen against Ace Five, a Broadway Gutty against Top Pair, Advantage Leng. Wow, Leng checks this flop and Jungle bets her value. Oh. Interesting situation. Really an orthodox line being taken by Check. Leng here, inducing Jungle Check. to take initiative. He took his one shot on the flop for a small bet, does not Check. fire Check. in position on the river, and now Jungle wow. has hit the king, and Leng comes out swinging. Yeah. All in. Raise all in. How much is it? I mean, I'm never good here. Wow, it's Would you make, like, kings more? and sevens or something? Nine. A jungle just thinks he has the best nine, hand with a king nine, here. Nine. Oh my gosh. So sick, because I'm never good, but like, how can I ever... Is Ryan really it? thinking of folding after taking this unorthodox line? It's only 300,000 more to call. He's getting 11 to I one. Save one bet. Crazy. 8.5. All he has to do is click call, getting an insane like price here, Chris. And jungle's done. Yeah, and jungle thinks he has the nuts with King Queen the way this hand was played. He, this is crazy. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Let me get on the table this one. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> jungle can't believe it. What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Uh, is that no, no, let's finish. why did he do that? Ryan Lang. <laughs> jungle can't believe it. Nice hand, Jungle. Yeah, you're raising for, for value, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's a bluff. Doesn't make any uh, sense. <laughs> Didn't click Jungle's call and in the process saying, cost himself and Paul call Volpe $185,000 in lockup money. That's crazy. Yeah. Very, very late now. 3 a.m. Pacific. 6 a.m. Eastern. It's official. And much like Jungle Man, we're still here. Very much still covering oh. the final table of this $50,000 Poker Players Championship. And Paul's taking a stand with King Six and Limit Hold'em. Action continues in Limit Hold'em, a Queen High Rainbow yeah. flop. Alina Jad alongside Chris Vich. Jungle has out flopped him with the bottom with the deuce. Working to crown our champion. Kate's just raising. Yeah, too much in there. Hopefully you have Jack Nine. Jungle is mm -hmm. gonna. Volpe is gonna be sick. And he gets himself all in and gets himself in a lot really of no trouble. No six and we're heads up. It's really bad. No six and we're heads up. Volpe is sick. I got no, no, no. King six versus King Deuce. King 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 Deuce. Deuce. Huh? I would be heads up with Jungle. By the way, Lang folded Jack Ten in this hand in the small blind playing very tight, knowing that Volpe might bust. It's coming 10 queen for sure. Ray Henson on the rail there. 10 queen for the chop. There are some ways that Volpe can tie this hand. That's not Oh, no. Way. Trip deuces on the turn, and it's a wrap. Just like that on the backside of the break. Paul Volpe eliminated in third place. And while he is a consummate professional, it will haunt him every time he sees Ryan Lang. The idea that Lang folded and allowed Jungle to get to this place okay. and ultimately cost Volpe $185,000 in pay jump between third and second. And it should have been him who was heads up Come with I told Lang. You, it was just Absolutely, you. he'll be thinking about it's that for, for a long time. So it be Don't think Jungle has any hands he can fold in the spot on the button, so it should just be uh, pretend to care what you have and a raise and a get it in. Ways. Might the tournament call. be decided call. here in the And Ling is limit. keeping 100,000 behind with 10 5. On the flop. I call. Wait, is that me I call in the dark. Oh, uh, you cannot back out of the tunnel, though, bro. I bet. Can't. Is I can't. Not, he's trying to get this 100K in, but it's so far no one's allowing it. I have a pair. Uh, it can't beat a pair. Ace Jack 10, all hearts. Ling no with a pair of 10s and Kate's. With Queen high and a Broadway gutty, he has no. seven outs. No, but hearts don't matter. Hearts don't matter. Your classic limit hold'em matchup of 10-5 <laughs> versus Queen-3 on the Ace-Jack-10-3 hearts board. 
A 1.8 million chip pot where Ryan Leng's tournament life hangs in the balance. Not the first time that's been the case, but last time it was aces against sixes. Oh. oh. Now the queen of hearts on the turn means Cates has the lead, but any heart for a chop, 10 or a five for the victory. The king would work as well. Is it there? No. no. And Jungle, Jungle Man game. has won his yeah, first career me. World Series of Poker bracelet, your 2021 50K <laughs> Poker Players <laughs> Champion, <laughs> who was effectively eliminated. All Lang needed to do was click call, and that is gonna be nightmare fuel for a very long time. Not just for Paul Volpe, who should have been heads up and got eliminated in third, but especially for Lang, who ends up being polished off by the man he could have busted, Chris. Incredible. Um, it's the kind of uh, comeback story that doesn't even seem real. Jung Jungle's been talking about the destiny and the magic and all the aura and all the stuff, but in some ways it really seems like there was something to it, the, Where does the way that this tournament went. A kid at heart and a champion. It is official. Jungle Man, Dan Cates. Takes down the 2021 50K Poker Players Championship, which was one for the history books, Chris. I'm glad I was a part of it, Ollie. This was quite a night. Glad you were as well. And for those of you still burning the midnight oil with us, we're glad that you did. On behalf of our entire team here in Las Vegas, my partner in the booth, Chris Fitch. I'm Ali Najat saying so long, and we'll see you next time as main event coverage resumes tomorrow.